10. So 10 is a little, uh, it has a couple different ways that you could imagine uh, uh, doing it. 10 is, would just as easily be uh, a PPP um, uh, question, but it has uh, a, uh, an aspect for us, for our purposes as well. So this one's a little bit wordy, but let's sort of run through it. The principal is presenting the client with the SD drawings in hopes of getting a sign-off to be able to move on to DD. So far, the principal has spent 12 hours on the project. The project architect has spent six, 60 hours on the project. The project manager has spent 60 hours on the project. And each of the three designers working under them has spent 100 hours on the project. The overall fee is 120000 How's it going? So what is this really getting at? Well, all we really have here is money. So what this is talking about is, does the money match the schedule? We have a very particular point in time. We're at the sign-off of SD. So we're at the changeover of SD to DD. Uh, so we have a scheduled moment, and we have a dollar. So let's figure out what's going on. So just to sort of clarify, I have SD, which is schematic design. I have DD, which is design development. I have CD, which people will often refer to as construction drawings. But for our purposes, when we're talking about the exam, we should really think of as contract documents, CDs. Happens to be both CDs. Uh, so that's what's uh, the, that phase. And then there's bidding. And then eventually there's CA, and that's construction administration. Uh, sometimes you'll see other terms used. Uh, it should never be, the other term should never be supervision. It might be observation, um, something like that. But if you say supervision, then you better have a contractor's license and contractor's insurance. Uh, because by using the word supervision, you've just taken over all the liability. So those are the five stages of a typical contract. Uh, there might be stuff that happens before that. You might have programming work. You might have uh, uh, feasibility studies. You might do marketing drawings so that the client can do fundraising. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff that might happen uh, before a project starts. But those would be extra to the uh, contract. They, those would be either be specifically um, uh, delineated in the contract and brought out with an with a extra amount of money, uh, or they might uh, uh, be a separate contract altogether. So there's stuff that happens before that. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that actually happens before that, but the contract starts at the SD, essentially. Uh, then after CA, there's a bunch of work that might be commissioning or warranties or post-occupancy studies. It's a whole bunch of other things that might happen uh, as you get past the, uh, the finish of the construction. But again, uh, those would have to be specially delineated in the contract uh, for you to get paid for them. So uh, if you're going to be doing a post-occupancy study, you would actually either contract for it separately, so it's its own contract, or you would have an additional service. So that's the key term, the additional service on the contract. So this is how we sort of generally uh, kind of break these things out, and it shows up in the contracts like this. And generally, there's a few different numbers that people use, but generally, under SD, we think about that as about 15%. DD is about 20% of the contract. CDs are about 45% of the contract. Bidding is usually listed as 5% of the contract. And then I think it's 15% uh, for CA. Now, is it always these exact numbers? No, sometimes it's a little bit different. Uh, are these numbers going to remain the same forever? No. With the advent of uh, BIM and uh, all the building information technologies, these things are starting to get mucked around because it doesn't make the same sense as it used to. But right now, it's still the contracts. This is still how it's thought of. Uh, and so uh, that's the number set that I have. All right, so we went through and we... Uh, uh, looked at kind of where we're at and kind of how the percentages work. Now let's take a quick look at uh, what so far everything has cost. Um, so we've got the uh, principal 12 hours at uh, 200 smackers an hour. 
uh, and so that's going to be totaling about 2,400. Um, we've got uh, the project architect um, uh, at 60 hours times, uh, what was it, 140. Uh, that's going to be equal to, what, I think it's 8,400. Somebody feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. I'm doing this kind of from memory. Uh, then we've got the project manager at uh, 120. Uh, and so, okay, that's going to be, let's see, 60 times 120. That's going to be, what, uh, 7,200. Uh, and then we have uh, all the rest of us doing the actual work, all the people really making it happen. That's going to be three people at 100, so that's 300 uh, times uh, 80 bucks an hour each for them. And so clearly that's about uh, 24 24,000. Uh, so, okay, we total that up and we get, I think it's 42,000. So we've spent 42,000 in time so far using these billing rates. So how are we doing? Well, if we're only at this point, we're presenting for the SD, we should only have spent 15% of our budget. Our total uh, fee was 120,000. 15% of 120,000 is 18,000. So we are way behind. C is the answer. Uh, sometimes you'll see people will do, will flip these and do 20% for SD and 15% for DD. Uh, even then, that would only be uh, 24,000. We'd still be way behind. Uh, so the point of this one is you need to know uh, these, the breakout of the SD to the CA and the sort of general percentages. Uh, and you also need to understand the sort of concept of the billable hours and how billable hours, uh, you know, these things are not, uh, you, you don't just make up a number. You actually think about how many hours it should take to do each of these steps. And then you need to meet those hours. If you don't, uh, like what's going to happen on this project is they are now way behind, so they've used up all of this uh, amount of the fee uh, before they've even uh, gotten to this point, to the SD point. And that means they now have to fit in design development and CDs in just that tiny amount of, of space. Uh, it's going to be very uh, difficult, and they're probably going to lose money on this project. What you're trying to make sure is that you understand not only how to put a set together, but that you understand the sort of contractual relationships of how these things kind of meet. So one quick example of that, let's say at this meeting, the principal is presenting the SD drawings. Let's say the clients just come back and say, you know, it's just not moving me. I'm just not into it. It's not working. There's a way out from the, from the contract for the client. They can then say, this isn't, this isn't working. I'm going to let you go. Uh, well, when they do that, you're going to give them a bill of 42000 because that's how much time you've spent. And they're going to give you a check for 18000 because they say, hey, this is SD. We're only paying you up to the 15% point. So there's a direct relationship between kind of managing the project and how the contracts and how the financial relationships work. So that's why I'm sort of putting this one in here. So that's a lot of numbers. Hopefully that was all pretty clear. Uh, but there you go. See, we're way behind. Actually, Ben thinks that uh, this project is way overstaffed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm with you, Ben. Uh, you know. um, and he actually also makes an interesting question. Um, he just wants to clarify overhead and profit should be included in the billing rates too, right? Yeah. So um, those are kind of like baked in to the billing rates. Yeah, the, so the billing rates, like, you know, Nobody's being paid $200 an hour. Um, you know, what they're being paid is some amount of money, and then there's also the amount of money we need to cover insurance, and the amount of money that we need to cover the rent, and the amount of money we need to cover uh, the fact that the principal always goes on vacation and tries to find a way to bill it to the office, and then uh, the amount of money, like all of that stuff has to get into those billable uh, rates. And the overhead and profit would also be in there would be built into those billable hours. Now, occasionally, this is a, a particular kind of, there are other ways of doing this. 
um, you know, sometimes you'll find that uh, the way the uh, client really wants to work is they want to do it where uh, they see all of your hours, they see the actual rates of payment, they see the, the uh, sort of amortization of the amounts of money for the overhead, and then they'll give you a profit at the end. Like that's a totally reasonable way to do things, but it's not the typical way of doing things, and that that would have to be like on the exam, they would have to spell that out that that's what they're talking about. If they if they're just talking about a typical relationship, then the expectation would it would all be built into the billable hours. Okay, beautiful. Um, so I think we've uh, we've gone over here and we've uh, answered quite a few questions along the way. So I'm going to go ahead and um, and close it up. Okay. Um, can you open up random.org on the web? Can you go down to the bottom here and grab Chrome and go to random? Dot org, so we can pick our winner, Chrome. Chrome, sorry. Yeah. Just real quick. Um, all right. Beautiful. Okay. So um, before we do that, I just want to thank. Um, Thank everybody for uh, for tuning in, Mike. Thanks for you know, to, <laughs> thanks to you for putting together these uh, awesome questions, um, and of course everyone who's to submitted their questions today. Uh, and just a reminder, if you'd like to attend our next ARE Live broadcast, where we'll discuss the site planning uh, and design exam, you can visit blackspectacles.com/podcast to register. And just like today's episode, you can ask questions and share your answers with Mike for feedback uh, during the broadcast. Uh, and to learn more about our AIA uh, ARE prep curriculum, go to blackspectacles.com where you can try out any of the free course videos. Um, and then, Mike, could you switch back to the uh, PDF for me? You can just click here. Yeah, there you go. So, um, so for those of you who are ready to start preparing for the ARE, uh, and if you're already an AIA member, is a part of our partnership with the AIA, you can visit that URL, that second URL there, uh, bksp.es slash cds slash or dash AIA ARE prep uh, to get a 15% discount for the entire duration of your AIA ARE prep membership. Um, we were tracking all of our uh, folks who submitted their questions via PDF before uh, noon central time today uh, and it looked like there were uh, two people who got everything right and that was Stephen and Ken. Uh, Stephen and Ken, I messaged both of you um, the link to get your free T-shirt. Nice job. Chat box. So yeah, that's impressive. There's a couple tricky ones there. Yeah, yeah. So that was a uh, so good job. Um, and then, so as you guys know, we want to give away a, a free um, one-month membership for Black Spectacles AIA ARE prep tutorials and our design software tutorials, where you can learn things like Revit, V-Ray, and, uh, and Grasshopper. Um, Mike, can you go to that random generator.org? So I have everybody here. Um, hit generate. Yeah, yeah. So if you hit a generate, I can tell you who the winner is. 34. Number 34. Number 34 is Obi. So Obi, I will be sending you an email um, with some information about your free uh, Black Spectacles membership. Uh, so thanks everybody for um, for participating in that. Thank you uh, for submitting all your answers. Uh, make sure you submit your answers for our next mock exam, which again will be on the site planning and design exam, so you can be entered into our uh, monthly drawing. Uh, finally, please leave a comment below the video to let us know what you think and share any suggestions you may have. I promise we'll read every word that you write and use them to tune our next episodes. So thanks for watching.